So uh, here James challenges us as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ to be uh, praying with faith. You know, not just praying, not believing, but praying that God is going to do a great thing because our prayers without faith is just wavering, you know, and uh, we got to stay steadfast realizing that God can answer prayer. James 1 in verse number 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That's a very important principle, to ask for wisdom. Wisdom is a principle thing. We need wisdom in every aspect of our life, just to conduct ourselves in our daily life. Wisdom that is from above us, perverse, pure, and peaceable, easy to be treated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. It says, if any of you, in verse number 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of sea driven with the wind and toss. And let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. So this needs to be a diligent uh, believing that Jesus can do great things in our heart, in our life, and answer prayers. We'll get into that throughout the day here. So do uh, just a couple pages back. Chapter 11 of uh, Hebrews, chapter 11 of Hebrews there, and verse number 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father, indeed, we're thankful that we can live in an attitude of prayer in every endeavor that we're involved in, as that is our purpose. May we be stirred up by the word of God and the Holy Spirit that we can extend our faith, extend our prayer life to a point where uh, it's far, far beyond what we ever ask or uh, receive in the area of seeking the Lord in prayer. So as we commence doing this and being honorable vessels, uh, good soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ, may in every aspect we can realize that in this journey we can pray in all these things. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Let's go to Second Timothy in chapter 1 is where we're going to uh, uh, and I'll do an overview a little bit of Second Timothy. This is interesting to me in many ways. This is Paul's last words, basically, in Scripture. And uh, it is exciting to see what he has to say uh, to young Timothy here, and I believe to us as well. And uh, uh, we will get in the aspect of this prayer in a few minutes, but let's look in actually chapter 2 here. Chapter 2. We want to, uh, whether it be man or woman, boy or girl, we can be good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And he gives us a plan and how to do that, to be identified with Christ. We ought not to be ashamed of the Lord Jesus. And three verses in this particular little book says not to be ashamed, and we'll look at that. But we have an identity in Christ, and uh, we ought not to be ashamed of him. The world's not ashamed of how they act and how what they say. We certainly not, ought not to be ashamed of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says there in uh, verse number 1 of chapter 2, Thou therefore, my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. That's our identification with Christ. And if any man also strive for masteries that he uh, not crowned except he strive lawfully. Look verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Let's look at verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure, having to seal it. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are only not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If any man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, satisfied and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good works. And finally, verse 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, and meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Now, as we look in verse number one here, it says, Thou my son. Now he has adopted son, uh, through, uh, uh, Paul 
influencing them, leading them to Christ. And all of us are sons and daughters of Christ, of God, when we have received Christ as our Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When I was 19 years old in the Navy, a, four, a sailor that was my superior uh, said, uh, can I share some things with you here? Well, my time is your time. He's my superior. So I was in the, on the USS Shenandoah and, uh, in the, in the, uh, the gyro compass room, and he led me to Christ after about an hour. And we have a superior in heaven that because of him, we're going to seek his face and find out what he wants from us. Paul was always in an attitude of prayer and seeking the Lord and also praying for others. Look at chapter 1 here of uh, 2 Timothy. And he says here in verse 3, I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that with, without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. And he was praying for Timothy and others continually. And you know, uh, we have 1,440 minutes in a day. 1,440 minutes in a day. If you, that's a lot of minutes. Is it possible by reprioritizing our life to give an extra 10 minutes a day to the Lord in prayer. Is it possible? I think so. Sometimes there are things that we, uh, the devil wants us to prioritize, but the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And as a son of God, I want to be seeking my father all the time and seeing what his will and his pleasure is. And that aspect goes on in every aspect of our life. On my phone here, I have over 500 pastors and households that we basically, and he knows we make communications throughout the month, see how he's doing, praying for his sermons or whatever. But we have over 60 households in 29 zip codes that we uh, are struggling people that we pray for and uh, try to minister to. It gives us an opportunity even on the phone to call people up, have a scripture for them, some that you may have heard today, and pray with those people. Uh, when I was out on visitation this last week, we made about 350 contacts in the city of Cleveland and uh, ran across uh, uh, three men that uh, over their office grand near Metro Hospital uh, that were in a group home, and they had challenges. But I don't know when's the last time they heard people pray for them. And I prayed with these men, showed them how to be saved and so forth, and, uh, and basically I have a picture of them. I could continue praying for them or whatever. But to hear someone praying for them, in, in sometimes by name, and, uh, and having that opportunity wherever we go. So when we go back to chapter 2 here, we, we see basically that we are, uh, we are all sons and daughters of Christ, but also in this aspect here, we can be strong in the grace of God. Uh, no matter what goes on around us, uh, we have the grace of God working for us. We, can, we need to think in grace. We ought to talk in grace. Let your, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt having that gracious attitude towards others. You know, every uh, godly attribute that Jesus has through his spirit can be incorporated in our life. You know, We say that the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And there's also two more. There's also two more. It says, uh, as far as the fruit of the spirit, it says in Ephesians 5, 9, the, the fruit of the spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth also righteousness and truth. We see that mentioned throughout the uh, Gospels. I think in, in Romans alone, the word righteousness, righteousness is mentioned over 30 times. To walk in his righteousness, walk in his grace, walk in his love, and share that with other people. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in, in, in Jesus Christ. And through that, we can strengthen other people. Look in verse number two. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And we have an opportunity, what you have learned here in doctrines and what you guys are going through these courses, you now are capable of sharing that with other people. And that's the idea of what we're trying to do, is churches that really grow are doing what you're doing, having Bible studies not only as a group, but individually. Uh, we use our John course as an introductory course for our new converts. We have our Bible study that leads people to Christ. Diana has been involved with leading some folks to Christ recently using our John course. Two of them got baptized recently, so it, it does work. We want to see, we're a Baptist church. We, some, I think we lag a little bit on our baptisms, though. You know, not only 
not only discipleship and baptisms, but we all ought to think of a person that I can be involved in discipling. And it might be something like this here. Uh, for instance, maybe uh, Samuel and I are, 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 I'm discipling Samuel. And after we go through the John course, he says, Mr. Starr, uh, I'm my brother Luke. He would probably like to go through that as well. Why don't you two of us go and do that? So Luke, Samuel and I are now doing Luke, you know. So now he's gone through it two times. Now Luke says, I have a friend named Matthew that would like to probably do this. So now Samuel is equipped enough for him and Luke to go out and to work with Matthew. That's how a church really grows and, and multiplies that way. And that's what we see in this verse here. We see that Paul has learned from the Lord. He is teaching Timothy. Timothy is teaching others, and then others are teaching others, you know. And the churches that are able to, through the local church, not run the gay Bible study, as you do this, say, Pastor, I have somebody that I'm discipling or whatever, is, or he may have someone that you may disciple. And I'll tell you, it is a joy to do that. I oversaw the discipleship program at Cleveland Baptist, and I had it on Wednesday night. And often we have 20 people up there, one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two, -two, discipling them and watch them grow. And it often, often offers opportunities to uh, uh, win others to Christ. I had a couple named uh, Kevin and, and Marissa, and uh, we were, Diane and I were discipling them, a young couple. And uh, through that, we pray with them and say, you have any prayer requests? And this, again, opportunities to pray before, after, through the Bible study. They said, well, uh, my grandpa, she's, Marissa said, my grandpa uh, is in Parma Hospital. Would you pray for his health? I said, is he saved? No. I said, I can go visit him and talk to him about it. Oh, he, she says, he's a pretty gruff guy, you know. And so I said, well, let's pray about it. I don't think he's going to throw me out of the room. Well, let's give it a shot, you know. So basically, we prayed about it. I went over there. He couldn't have been nicer. To make a long story sh short, he got saved, his wife got saved, they both got baptized, mm -hmm. faithful to the church. So those kind of things, as we pray and ask for contacts, uh, you, you might get in a hospital or a nursing home or follow up. I get, we have a group of guys that meet on Thursday, every other Thursday, and there's about uh, 12 of us total. Uh, when Brother Best can make it, he comes on down to help us out. Most of us are 75 years old or whatever, uh, but uh, we get, we get uh, prayer requests. We're, we're in an old Taco Bell building, it's called Daybreak, and I'm, I, there's a bunch of us guys here, and I'm talking like I am now, but they can hear me all across Daybreak Restaurant. Sir, could you pray for this person? I had a lady, a uh, name I think was Tamara, Cynthia. She said, would you pray for uh, so and so? And I found out Cynthia was Catholic and was able to witness to her right there in the spot. And it's a very kind way, sharing uh, John 14, 6, and so forth. And then her friend, uh, she knew my Uncle Ray and talked to her about the Lord. So wherever you're at, you know, and we, we use that as a prayer area, everything revolves around what? Prayer, you know. And I hope you're seeing that. So uh, when we talk to people, neighbors or friends, uh, and then it says there in verse 3, uh, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I went into the Navy when I was 17, just graduated from high school. And for those, to the time I was 21, it was a hard life. I was in the Vietnam War for four campaigns and the disciplines and all that, you're, al you're always battle ready and so forth. And we as Christians, even though we're saved, it's not easy. The devil's going to attack. I even think today, uh, when I'm coming over here, the devil, the devil didn't want me to be here in a lot of ways. I mean, I was, I was in a mess out there. Diana is now with me. I'm a G, not a, G, a GPS guy and all that. So, uh, but uh, uh, I was praying about it, and God helped, whatever it is. But you know what? In the midst of your the trouble you're in, seek the Lord all the time. Ask the Lord to give you direction and peace. I certainly need a direction, but He can He can help us. And so, I'm going to give you some things. Uh, about this idea of suffering. Second Timothy, virtually every chapter deals with suffering well for the Lord here. We have security as a believer, and we can suffer well as having that security. Look in chapter 1, in verse number 12. Chapter 1, in verse number 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day, including my soul. He keeps me. I don't keep myself. I am kept by the power of God unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, First Peter 5 says, 1, 5. Look in chapter 3 and verse 12, this idea of suffering. How many Christians are going to suffer that are godly? Um, a few, 
80%? No, it says in verse 12, Yea, all and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. The key word, the key uh, uh, context in that word there is pursue. The devil pursues us in many ways, not only an attitude of maybe uh, physical, it might be mental, it might be emotional, it might be in the workplace, it might be neighbors, it might be your own relatives. I thought when I got saved when I was 19, my family would, would be real happy about it. There was not one that was happy about it. You know, all they do is throw back my, throw in my face how I was before or whatever. But eventually I was um, tr trying to apply some of these things we're talking about. So I was able to lead most of them to the Lord. But the idea here is the devil will pursue you. And, uh, but we have a God that is with us. And if God be for us, who will be against us? And as a result, we can be soul winners uh, in the Lord. Uh, as he tries to pursue us, we're going to pursue others for the Lord Jesus. You know why? Because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Look in chapter 1, chapter 1, and verse number 7 and 8. As soul winners, I often ask the Lord, first of all, to clean my heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit with me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me. We need to be clean, pure vessels for the Lord. Paul said he, he, want, he, had, he had a pure conscience. And we need to be clean when we go out. And it says in verse number 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And basically, when we go out there, we have great power. We have the power of the word of God. We have the power, we have the power of the gospel. We have the power of the blood of Christ. We have a resurrected Savior. We have power in prayer. We have power in our witness. We have power with uh, our, 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 our partner. Uh, yes, yesterday and the day before I was out, a uh, 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 witness to about 12 people in those uh, particular times there about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I'm an older man now, and they, they seem to appreciate it. When I come, I come with boldness, and I come with truth, I come with love. And uh, usually, I'm going to give you this tip here. Uh, I have a friend at uh, uh, Triple L Lake Baptist Church as a song leader. He used to work at Walmart. He says there's this 10-second thing. There's 10 seconds when people are sizing you up as you approach them. They see if you're ha uh, friendly, I'll use, I'll use KFC. Be kind, be friendly, be cheerful. And uh, you, you notice a lot of folks like that Cracker Barrel, you come in there, and often those people are saying, hey, how are you doing? I'm glad, welcome to Cracker Barrel. So I'll be, I'll be working, and I saw those three guys. Boy, it's a beautiful day, gentlemen. I'll say something like that. I'm Brian from Cleveland Baptist Church. This is a track that shows you how you can go to, you can go to heaven by trusting Jesus as your Savior and having your sins forgiven. I want to give you this track. And that was, that was about 10 seconds. And they, they take it. I was involved a few weeks ago uh, where it was a black gang members that I believe, and uh, it was over on a very rough area where within a couple of miles of there has been 11 murders. And so uh, basically, I thought, I thought to myself, God has not given me the spirit of fear. Greater is he that is in me that is in the world. And I prayed about it and said, hi, hi, gentlemen. I'm pretty sure they haven't heard the word gentleman in a long time, you know. So I said, hello, gentlemen. You know, so I went right to the leader. He was one sitting down. They were all around him. And I gave him a track, told him basically the same thing. And I think because I showed courage, first of all, and I was friendly towards him, and I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't uh, like, like, oh, you know, they can tell. Everybody can tell if you're scared of them. And so I was able to give them the gospel, you know. You know a lot of those folks in gangs, they basically want to be accepted. That's why they're in games. They want to be, have a fellowship, whether it be bad or good. Most of those guys will end up in prison. And it's interesting, at Mother's Day, they want a card for mom. They want to send a card out for mom. But on Father's Day, no one wants a card because they most of them know where their fathers are at. And so those folks need Christ as much as anybody. Amen? No matter where we go and how we try to do it, to be soul winners as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, to be honorable vessels of the Lord Jesus Christ, to strengthening other people by discipleship, realizing we are a son of God, we are accountable to God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And so we need to be a living sacrifice as a soldier for God. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing your mind. So we look here in verse number four, three and four. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warth entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. The devil wants us to be entangled with the things of this world. This is a jaded world, you know. 
And uh, you gotta be careful, young people, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Because the devil is all around. These phones, they have good on them, but they have a lot of evil on it as well. And you gotta be very, very careful. And so we're gonna look at uh, some areas in which we want to not be involved. Look in um, chapter three and verses one through six to be entangled in. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those uh, that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, loving the, uh, the pleasure more than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. You know what's happening in our political realm is going right on down into the inner city of Cleveland and all around us. Is this, there is this uh, corruption, there's this compromise going on where Christians too are getting caught up in it. I am so sick of the politics on both sides of it and the cursing that's going on on both sides of it. The compromise on the abortion issue. There's no compromise with God, that is a life. That's a little baby, it's a life in there. And the compromise on the perversion that's going on here, both sides of the level there. I don't see much going on as far as a positive activity, but we have one in heaven that is our commander in chief, that we could be good soldiers, honorable vessels, vessels of mercy to our God. And as we close, and this is not gonna be a real short conclusion, but reasonably short. Let's look in verse number five. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Striving for masteries, striving, make, make great efforts to achieve for God. We press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We don't want to take the low life as a lot of the world is. We want to take the high life. We come here, we want to look good for the Lord, not uh, for a show here, but dress the best we can for the Lord Jesus Christ. Give honor and worship and glory. Great music, great spirit here. And we, we need to carry it out into the street. You know, football season is starting. I, I love football. I played all sports. Actually, I'm a seven-sport guy right now. I'm teaching my grandkids how to play tennis and all these things here. And I don't go to the football game to watch them huddle. Like, oh, man, that is really a great huddle. No, they break huddle, and they're going to run a play. Well, we don't need just to huddle in church. We've got to break huddle and get out there, every one of us, and tell people about Jesus Christ. The Thessalonian church did that. You read that in chapter 1 there. So <clears throat> we need to be accessible. We have those 1,440 minutes to adjust our time, uh, to, uh, to anticipate the needs of others, to adopt ministries in which we can pray with people, get adept at it, adhere to it, stick with it. So you might have a ministry of card writing. Pray for those cards. And we, uh, our church... Pastor uh, Jamie probably received some of the cards over a quarter, every quarter, is that we send out cards, and we have various folks, Miss Hattie and others, that write out cards in our church uh, to about 60 pastors, 60 wives around Northeast Ohio and beyond. And it's an encouragement, I think, getting a handwritten letter. When I was in the Navy, uh, you know, uh, in all these countries I was in, I was in many, many countries of war ship, man, mail call was the best, getting mail call, and getting something that was a handwritten card or letter. It doesn't take long to write out a nice note, still a dollar a tree or a dollar and a quarter a tree. You can still get cards there and, and uh, write out cards to people and you won't regret doing that. And the idea too, as we mentioned, so winning and so seed planting and watering, Sometimes, most of the time we're not going to win the person to Christ right on the first crack, but we're planting seed and then sometimes we're watering. Uh, one of my friends, Sharon Brunkstow, was preaching there a couple of weeks ago at Southwest Baptist Church, and um, she was uh, witnessing to her friend uh, in line at Mark's, she's a cashier at Mark's in Strongsville, gave her a track, her name was Karen, witnessed to her a few times and so forth, and then she was in another line one day, and Karen said, come on over here, Sharon, I want to talk to you. She said, I received a John and Romans from Broadview Heights Baptist Church with a Bible study, in, which was ours, and she said, I got saved reading that, but you know what? you help plant and you help water. So this idea, just you know, passing out tracks, grab tracks, ask God to give you divine appointments on Monday morning through the week, you know, and God can do that as well. So then <clears throat> we want to 
set our affections on things above, not on the things of this world. We're in seasons of life where God can use all of us. Even though we're older, we still can be used of God. Younger people, you can go out with a partner with the older people. My daughter's going to be 39 this year. I'm, I didn't mention it to her, but she'll be 39. And so, but I remember when she was four years old, we'd go out with Grand, Grandma Hoffman. And those two would be a, be a great combination. Grandma was like 83. They were both cheerful. And uh, Laura had his curly hair. And uh, everybody received them well. So just making up teams. Uh, we're going to be helping our brother, um, uh, might as well mention this now, uh, 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 Brian, uh, uh, Ryan Gillen is going to have a blitz at his church in about two and a half weeks during a Tuesday uh, or Saturday. So you guys can have the option to come out. And it'll be a great time. If you, if you do not want to knock on the door, somebody will go with you will, or you can just leave material. But it's a great time to get that to get, uh, get distributed. They're going to have like a one-day uh, children's program. So I'll, I'll get, you, get you the dates on that, you know. But he's a wonderful young man and could use the help over there. So <clears throat> we talked about soul winning and security. But we are a student of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look in chapter 2 and verse 15. I'm really preaching to the choir here, and I'm glad I am. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We ought not to be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We ought not to be ashamed because we have security as a believer. We ought not to be ashamed because when we know the word of God and apply it and share it with other people, we have that confidence that God can use that word to make a huge difference in people's lives there. So all of us, the idea is today we're hearing the word of God. You did some student studying. You're writing it down. One reason, and I'm, I don't want to be a downer to preachers or, or people that give out uh, speeches, is I know myself, we are people that have frailties. The average person forgets 90% of a sermon or a message within an hour, you know. So that's why we can't give out handouts so you can remember better, retain better. You're writing things down, it's linear or whatever it is. I was with Pastor Youth about 22 years ago, and we're working the bus route. I love working at bus routes there. I went, at Cleveland Baptist, I uh, oversee the outreach uh, visitation there as a visitation director. I had my office open five days a week for outreach. So um, I love doing follow-up on bus people, kids I got saved and following up. And so basically, uh, Brother Huth and I were uh, working in the neighborhood, and I think it was a bus ministry, and we invited this young lady. She was, I think, 14 years old, and uh, I, I opened up our John and Romans Bible study, and she's writing down all the, you know, all the questions, you know, and I shared the scriptures, and she's writing them down. She didn't get saved, but the next day, she came to church, brought four people with her, with her and I think three people got saved, you know. So basically, I was with Brother Aaron Furman, and uh, we were, he had, he had a van route at one time when he was a youngster. Uh, he was about 20 years old. And I, 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 I said, I want to show you a few things on the van route there. So he followed up on the, uh, on the three mothers that, that day uh, that uh, the kids got saved, I think. And we were, in, we were in the living room with them, or in the kitchen, actually, with most of them sitting down. Uh, more or less, I would say, I'm really thankful that you're sending your young people to church. We want you to know what they're learning. You know, the most important thing is they're learning about salvation. Can I share what they're learning about salvation with you? So we led three of those mothers to Christ that morning. And so I asked Aaron uh, how it went the next day. He says, we had to go back out and get another van to fill up the van again. You know? So uh, just doing those kind of things, using those inroads to pray with them, win them to Christ, and so forth. So we're students, we're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, I like uh, acronyms. One of the acronyms I like is L-O-T-S, LOTS. It says to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, and love your neighbor as yourself. O, be obedient to the doctrine which you have learned. We need to be obedient with all our heart. Then T, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And that's seek the Lord with all your heart. We're going to talk about that this afternoon. And then <clears throat> we see this great old Paul. He was steadfast to the very end. Uh, he says here in chapter 4, for our, in verse 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall Give, uh, uh, the righteous shall, shall give me that day, and not to me only, 
and unto all them also that love his appearing. Here he, he, he was ready to be offered. He already fought the good fight, and he finished his course. May each and every one of us be able to say that. I was, I was mentored by a, a wonderful pastor named Roy Thompson. Roy Thompson was the original pastor at Cleveland Baptist Church. I was on staff there for 17 years. We had much of the same background, and we were the best of friends. We went on about 10 vacations together, on mission trips together, and we just loved being with one another. And um, uh, I was at his last service that he preached uh, on a Sunday over in North Israel, uh, basically at uh, uh, Dennis White's church at Grace Baptist Church there. And uh, so basically after the service, he said to me, I'm going to share with you my funeral. I said, I don't want to hear about your funeral, you know, but he had nine days to live. He, may, he actually preached till Wednesday and was sitting down by Wednesday. But then the following Tuesday, he went to be with the Lord. But then uh, while he was, uh, he retired in 1995. And what I have here is a very special gift. He gave me his syllabus with Roy Thompson on there as a gift to me. We used this to write out 800 pages in 68 courses. I think this is sort of anointed, you know, piece of material he gave me here. He sent me a letter when he was, uh, when he was uh, in the Philippines and my family a letter. And we, we just did, we did a lot of things together, including playing a lot of golf and uh, vacations, learned a lot about him. This is his letter, handwritten letter here. This is a man that brought won thousands of people to Christ. This church started with 11 people, and then at one point of 2,000 people, you know. And it was just amazing what God had did. He said, Dear Brian, Diana, James, and Laura, thanks for your letter. It is really exciting getting mail. He's now in the Philippines. I feel I am where God wants me but I sure miss my family and the church. I am experiencing what I preach when I say home is a little taste of heaven. People have been so kind to me, it is unbelievable. I'm preaching every day, sometimes three or four times, people saved in every service. The Filipinos are so open. You would love to be here. So winning is acceptable. People are friendly. My son and I went there for a period of time. We saw on one Sunday, get this, one Sunday, 48 people walked the aisle and got saved, 40 adults. You know. So, I mean, that's incredible how many people get saved there. It's, it's, it's apples and oranges. It's just they're humble people, and they're more open. They're poor people. People are friendly. The food is good, and there are golf courses here much better than the ones we play on. Sounds like I died and went to heaven. You can get a round-trip ticket uh, on Northwest for $900. That's many years ago. <laughs> Won't cost you anything to stay here. Well, uh, we'll house and feed you. What date did you say you were going to come? Help say hello to you all, especially your dear family and your father and mother-in-law. God bless Roy Thompson uh, and so forth. But I'm telling you, this man finished the course well. I mean, he, he, he was preaching uh, less than a week before he passed away with cancer. May we finish our course well. May we be the students and the soldiers of Jesus Christ, being honorable vessels unto the Lord, being prayerful people, which we'll talk in the afternoon. I'm, I'm going to share things with you that, unless you have some emergency, I would stay for this afternoon to help stretch our prayer life. There's nothing more important than stretching our prayer life and our communicating with the Lord to see what he would have us do in, his, in our life. It's, it's very important today. If you come and stay, you won't regret it. Father, I do pray in the name of Jesus that we have these 1,440 minutes that you would work in our heart to stretch our prayer life. Help us to reprioritize our life here. Search us, O oh God, and know our heart. See what our priorities are. There's some things we can cast aside and give it over to the Lord. But I pray for every soul in this room. Maybe there's someone who has never experienced uh, the salvation that's through Jesus Christ that died for all our sins, each and every one, shed his blood, and uh, was buried and rose victoriously from the dead. And anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord can be saved even today. So, Lord, I pray as pastor gives the invitation that you would help us to stretch our prayer life, to use it in these areas as students of the Word of God, as soul winners, as uh, people that disciple other people, that uh, care for other people that are struggling, Lord. Help us to use our prayer life for writing out cards or calling people on phones or even when we're out uh, canvassing, telling folks about Christ. So bless this invitation in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Pastor, I'm going to shake his hands up here.